All right, we are back Sunday. It is, what is it, January 10th. We're gonna go over, you know, small caps have been hot. There's so many movers, so many stocks and small caps. We're gonna go over uh, a lot of these small caps today. I'm gonna try to put out some videos really breaking down these small caps. Maybe I'll do like five each video. And then, um, you know, we'll, we'll analyze this real good. Technically, we'll look at the fundamentals and we'll see, you know, where the chart, where these are going and, you know, how we can really make money, anyone can make money on these stocks. So, should there monitor some of this stuff? All right, let's look at SNDL. This is Sundial Growers. And let's take a look what they do. Sector, agriculture, forestry, fishing, and hunting. Subsector, crop production. And they engage in production and distribution of flour, pre-rolls, and vapes. It operates through the following segments, cannabis, uh, ornamental flowers and corporate cannabis segment includes legal cultiva uh, cultivation and distribution of cannabis products under federally regulated license issued by Health Canada. What else does it say? The corporate segment represents corporate activities and items not allocated to Reportable operating segments. Company was founded by Stanley J. Switek and is headquartered in Calgary, Canada. Any other information here? Let's see. Nothing here. Profile. All right. So the float, they have 389 million. That's a large, large float. So this doesn't move necessarily like a penny stock. It's ain't going to move. You know, a huge jumps, so although, you know, it can move here. You can see back here, 50 cents a dollar. <clears throat> it is possible, you know, how it moves, but it's not one of them low floats. Short float, 8.6%. Short growth, 58%. Market cap, 73 million. They have 19 million in cash. Can change. Current debt, 90 million. Enterprise value is 166 million. Revenue, 51 million. Uh, current assets, 169 million. And let's see what else here. Held by insiders, 11.23%. Institutions, 5.37%. So, yeah, they have 19 million in cash right now. Revenue, 51 million. And it doesn't include income. A lot of things are missing here. Let me look at... Uh, Look on FinBiz. Sales 54 million. Now, market cap on this on FinBiz, they say 522 million. But on trade ID, it says 73 million. Something's not right there. I'm looking through what else we got here. Anything significant? All right, that's the main part. And let's see what else here. All right, that's the main financials. So you can see when they have cash on FinViz. Cash, cash. No, it doesn't say here. Look at All right, let's look at the chart. That's the main thing too. Once you get by all these stocks. So this came out. What was this? 1322, I guess this IPO way back in August 1st, uh, 2019. Then this came down, down. Really, they washed this down and it bounced here. December, you know, bounced the four from two, came back down again. You know, floated towards this 50 cent line. This really became, you know, penny stock really under a dollar. And then right here, we had to move down. You have 50, you had to move to 125, then back down to 25 cents. 
and it went below 20 cents. This one is low as, you know, 14 cents. It hits at 68 cents right now. So I don't think this is going out of business, you know, anytime soon. So a lot of these stocks, if they go that far below, you know, it's not a bad time to buy on some of these stocks here. Draw my line right here to connect these. All right, so this is more, see, this is more see, connection point right here. If you had to move down here, <clears throat> can you bounce up to 125 and bounce again just below? Remember, I said that about 15 cent line, 14 cent. And this really came down for months here. Look at this. If you draw your line <clears throat> right here, then we bounce up. Look at this November. And then we came back at 1320 EMA, then we bounce up. Came back again, see the low, each time it's getting higher, it's getting higher. And where we're at now, we'll draw this here, let's see. Let me connect these. I guess that's good because this touches here. It doesn't have to be exact. So since November, look at the volume now. See this volume compared to this? This is much higher. And it tells me here it's probably accumulation you know, with a lot of the cannabis sector consolidating and and the cannabis sector consolidating, what else are they doing? They are, with the governments, they're all increasing, you know, the awareness of this, that it's not gonna be probably illegal much longer as far as, you know, major crime. Um, I think it's a slap in the wrist, a lot of these places you're caught with cannabis and stuff, so. The main thing I'm saying is, you know, I think we are going to uh, definitely go up in a lot of these cannabis stocks, you know, longer term because they're decriminalizing it and medical marijuana too. I'm not looking at every state and, you know, how they, uh, their laws, but medical marijuana is increasing. You know, some states are going to have like a slap in the wrist and you get caught. So decriminalization. Um, so it's looking better and better for a lot of these, these plays here. So you can actually draw a line on this one right here. <clears throat> so move up, move down, move up, move down, but the low is getting higher, higher, higher. And what's this going to do? Well, if this comes down again, you want this line to hold. See this trend line to here, maybe 50 cents for a move up. Now it's been in the downtrend right here. See a steady downtrend. So now yeah, what are we looking here? Yeah, if this trend line holds, so you want really 50 cents to see this here, here, you want 50 cents to hold. If this holds, you know, you'll bounce up again. And then we probably will test this dollar, you know, 75, $1 plus, I will call it 125 zone on this. So short term, you want 50 cents to hold. And then you're looking for, you know, 75 is real close. So a dollar to 125, which is back last year. That would be my target right now, you know, immediate target. So SNDL, you know, the monthly, not much to go on. <clears throat> the weekly, see this cross, and then here, see the divergence here. See this right here. So we went up, and that's a good weekly candle. That's the four hour drift in here. So, so SNDL still looks pretty promising here. One to 125, we'll look for a short term. And that is it on it. All right, let's go to ZOM. Try to do five of these. All right, ZOM. Market cap about 273 million, float 539 million, cash 52 million, enterprise value 181 million, current debt 1.4 million, uh, assets 56 million, 
4% insiders own 10% plus institutions. Uh, Zometica Corp operates as a development stage company, creates products for companion animals by focusing on unmet needs of clinical veterinarians, it plans to offer novel diagnostics and therapeutics that focus on patent health and practice health. The company was founded by Gerald L. Selinsky on January 7th, 2013. It's headquartered in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Look at recent insider buys. John Powers, director, bought 625,000 shares, traded 16 cents. That was a pretty good buy there. Finviz, float, everything's about the same here. Um, cash 52 million. Looking at any other, I don't see sales or anything. All right. So let's look at this stuff. Yeah, this is way back 2017. These weird little candles, no volume. This came all the way up 275 plus and crashing down um, about July of 2018. So we'll go from there. Look at this going down, down. And then this came down to like 20 cents. And then this bounced all the way up to 40, 45 cents. Then we came down again. Let's see the volume here. And then this came, this is low right here. Low is six cents. Wow. So imagine you have in this six cents and it's on um, 50 cents. And yeah, it didn't seem like you're going bankrupt. It'd be too many cash. So and that's a lot of things. Remember, we crashed in November. A lot of these stocks are the same pattern. We look at ever since there. See the volume? Volume is really big volume compared to the normal volume. Back here was a little bit. Um, so this is really, you know, it's a 10. And we have our 13 above your 20 EMA and a 15. And then we went all the way up to. 55, we pull back a little bit. So this is really good on fire. You know, where could this go? Well, we have a falling wedge right here. Yeah, 50 cents. You know, right at this gap fill right here. We're gonna pull back a little bit and then come back up. You know, it's hard to say. Um, we have 60 cents right here, all these lines. Well, here's the one dollar. See, this must be IPO back then. All these like sketchy lines. I would look for, yeah, you know, immediately we got to get over 50 and then 75 to a dollar would be very a good zone on here. So 75, one dollar and ZON. Now, your stop on this, yeah, it's only 50 here. This could easily pull back. It'd be extremely careful. I'll look for 30 cents at 1320 EMA on this. <clears throat> but Looks very promising. The weekly, see the weekly, this tight, tight triangle we broke out. Now we crossed over, so I don't like that. We crossed over negative. Let me see the monthly. Well, the monthly is still going out, though. We're like wrapping. We're doing this, that wrap around. So this might have legs to go in the monthly. See the weekly, we could have a short term pullback. We could pull back here or here and pull we go up. You just never know. Uh, the weekly, here's the weekly. So we're right at here, and we're crossing. See this? If you low to high, that's what you want. So it made it to move, although it could stay up. So let's be aware of that. So seventy-five a dollar looks very promising. Uh, just watch for your pullback zone. All right, ZON. Here's JAGX. Float 59 million. Market cap 337 million. Cash 1.35 million. Revenue 8 million. Current assets 36 million. Insiders on 13.57%. Institutions 4.83%. They have current debt 15 million. Enterprise value 128 million. 
commercial stage pharmaceutical company which engages in development of gastrointestinal products. Products include Haven, Levia, Ecobalia, and Neonorm. It operates through the human health and animal health segments. The human health segment manufactures human products and the ongoing advertising of mice testy, which is used for symptomatic relief of non-infectious diarrhea in adults with HIV AIDS and antiviral therapy. Animal health products, animal health segment uh, commercializes prescription and prescription products for companion and product animals. The company was founded by Lisa A. Conti in 1613 and headquarters in San Francisco. Jaguar Health, let me see what it is. Human health and animal segments. The insiders, Jan Blochensky and Jonathan Siegel on July 23rd bought 12,000 shares and 180 shares at $2. All right, so let's look at sales, 8.3 million. Float on this to 59 million. <clears throat> Got information here. Can viz as other information. They do irritable bowel. Includes cholera, animal health products. All right, so yeah, you know, this is one on the tear lately. Now going back to this stock, it looks like it actually way back in you know 2015. So it wasn't 7,000 a share reverse split. See this, it did it down here, two reverse splits. Down, down, this eventually dropped. And where we're at now, after this was like 30, 40, the reverse split again has really dropped hard to that one zone. Draw a line here, try to connect these lines. And see this right here, 175, and pull back to, you know, bounce, but pull back to 50 cents. Pull back here, not below. Then this came to 25 cents. See everything in November. When we pull back November, most of these stocks, small cap, large cap, the market, then we bounce up. <clears throat> then we bounce up right here to 50. Look at the volume here. And then your 33 cents, it's hovered for a while, for like a month. Then we bounce up hard on uh, 655 million volume. Then we pull back, look at this right here. Float it to near this 13 EMA, bounce at 75, right through the one zone. Look at this. And this has been one, two, three, four, six days of, you know, pretty strong green candles. This is filled, this is like a cross spinning candle. And look at the volume. White candles are up for me. This is a tremendous move. You know, has the move been made? Let's look at the monthly. Monthly, this is the first big candle. See out of this little zone here, this little channel. You're crossing out. You have a white over red, which means it's extremely bullish in the monthly. So this has room to run to me. To me, this isn't turning down. It's got a crossover back negative. Um, the weekly still going. Look at this streamline. The weekly is right at four. You know, where can you see a four, you know, five, six? The reverse split was at you know, about seven. You have Look at this 10 zone right here. One, two, right at that 10 zone. <clears throat> C, 
So, you know, you're going to look for this, go up each number, four, five, six. Right here is a verse split at six, eight, 10. 10 is right here from 2019. So anywhere from, you know, of course we're at four, four to 10 on this. Now your stop, you got to keep a tighter stop. This could fall back real hard to 13. <clears throat> You know, what all these are manipulated to, you don't know who's in these, like a hedge fund, whoever's playing these, uh, market managers. You know, this could fall all the way back here to the 13 and bounce. You've seen this before. Remember, stocks could go down here and bounce at your 13, 20 EMA. This could come here and then bounce straight up hard. It could get a big red candle. So in this, I'd be very careful to keep your stop very tight. I want to put your stop down here, that's for sure. And you're playing in between. I could gap down. If you have a gap down, this one's a little bit tougher because big moves are made already. So, but watch anywhere four to 10 in the next, you know, weeks, few weeks, who knows? So, Jagex is very strong now. That is it on that. LMFA, this is um, LMFA Funding America, float 12 million, market cap 32, cash 12.23 million, revenue 1.59 million, assets 12.94 million, insider zone 20%, institution 17%, it's not bad, current debt 533,000, 36,000. LM Funding America is a specialty finance company provides funding to nonprofit, community associations primary located in the state of Florida, as well as the states of Washington, Colorado, and Illinois. The company offers funding to associations by purchasing a portion of association rights and delinquent accounts that have that are selected by the associations arising from unpaid association assessments. Funding America was found at Caroline Good, January 14, 2000. 2008, headquartered in Tampa, Florida. Let me read this again. Company offers funding to associations. So by purchasing a portion of the association rights to delinquent accounts that are selected by associations arising from unpaid association assessments. It's kind of confusing. So they offer funding to associations by purchasing Association's rights of the delinquent accounts by the association you said were unpaid. Okay. And from 2020, November, all buying, you have 14,000, 18, 11, 1, 50, 83, 000, 6, 000 shares. Tons of shares have been bought from 90 cents to 147 on this. All right, so sales 1.6 million. Let's look in here on those trade ideas. This is a uh, Finviz. Company provides medical insurance products to international travelers too. All right, so this is one on the tear too. You know, going back to 2016, looks like this IPO, like 100, came down, came down again. You know, 20, you had a reverse split back here on October 16, 2018, one for 10 split. And then came all the way back and got down to $1. And the bottom of this gap was $2. So now here's your chart here. This is a very easy chart to read. You have your $2 zone. Then in between it fell, see this? Then this fell really hard on this candle, 30 cents back in April. And then look at this, oversold, this bounced. Then this had this massive candle as high as 489. And then it fell off again. 
gap down to where we are, you know, uh, August had a little gap. From August, September, October, November, December, you were in a zone, 50 cents to one dollar, uh, no, about 80. Look at this, back and forth. Back, that is a channel play as well. You touched once, broke up, wasn't the time. Again, wasn't the time. It's gonna be the time when it's gonna be the time, basically. That's how these work. And it was with 268 million, broke through a dollar easily, just crushed it, 125, you know, two, three, 333. And going to the weekly, see this two zone? And this handle here went as high as 489. Now, where are we at now? Let's pull back from 350 line. Was there traffic up here? Yeah, right here, looking back July, August, you have a lot of wicks here. Got that three, 367 line. On the monthly, in the monthly, we're just getting started to cross over stochastics here. See this rounding move? It looks like this needs to go up. Now, could these get bought out, some of these? I guess it's possible. Yeah, I don't know how often they get bought out. But right here is the five zone. Yeah, where could this go now? This, this is a straight up move. So it wouldn't surprise me to get a candle back like this. Usually it'll come middle way. <clears throat> we'll see on this. Yeah, this has made a huge move. But I mean, as far as the future, it has to get over now this three, what about like 350 zone, 360. Then you have the four big resistance here, four with the reverse split. You know, if we can get over four, you have five. And then you have a lot of wicks here at six. So look for 350 to six short term. You know, maybe even seven to, what's it, seven to eight possible if it really, really takes off. Now you're stopping this, and this is gonna stop right now, it's a huge one candle. So this could fall back to here, you don't know, it could fall right back to the middle. You have to play this, see what it does Monday. It might come right back to here, like halfway, 150, 175. So, but it still has potential long, but it might pull back again, we'll see on this. It could come back right into this channel again. It's done this before, see this one, that one almost, and this. So we'll see on this. And this is the move. See this? It really took off late in the day. And the reason too is they announced filing for stack registration statement. All right, that's number four. Let's get number five, CNET. All right, CNET, ZWZ, data, 2 million float, market cap, 80 million, cash, 500,000, market cap, 80.3 million, revenue, 46.81 million, insiders on 26.79%, which is good, institutions only 42, 0.42%. Um, engages in providing advertising, precision marketing online to offline sales, channel expansion, and related data services to small and medium enterprises. Services include precision marketing, data analysis, member point management, and other value added services. The company was founded by Han Dong Jing and Zi Zhang in 20, 2003, and is headquartered in Beijing, China. So China play, I don't trust. I don't trust China, please. And Finviz has sales 45 million. Insider zone on here, they say 22%. Float 20 million, a little bit higher. January 7th, they had Data Action Technologies now a strategic partnership with Yuzhen Capital. That was the last news. It has internet portals, including 28.com, leunso.com. Etc. Headquartered Republic of China. The one thing China plays, you can't really trust. You don't know their financials. They could be lying about everything. It's pure speculation. 
And I think, wasn't it in Congress or something, they wanted to delist all these Chinese companies from uh, stock exchange, I think it was. All right, so look at uh, CNET. Look here back in June. This is where it all started. Well, you go further back, 2018, this had a huge spike to 11.90. This went from one to hour to 11, look at this. And then it came way back and then you got into this little zone here. See this channel, back and forth, back and forth. <clears throat> and all these are patterns getting out. This is a falling wedge. When you have here, the high getting lower and the low really holding or slowly getting tighter. It's not really going down that much. See this, see the space. And then it really dropped here. It did one of these, fell out of the falling uh, wedge and came right up. 75. <clears throat> and then we formed the new pattern here, May. Look at this, May, June, July. We kept bouncing. Look at these highs. So you went from like a dollar, dollar fifty. Bounce again, two dollars, one fifty. Then right here, this went to three eighteen. That filled candle came back to one twenty five. See the low, but the low never got really below a dollar. Then hovering, you're getting all kinds of spikes. Can you have to move to uh, one twenty five right here? <clears throat> and then this look at this one fifty here big candle that was on thursday and then you know friday it really slowed it up they really pushed this hard you have a wick to exactly 475 and the low was 179 so big move for the top and bottom it settled right here and look where we settle ain't that funny look at this this is how all this is so like integrated these um these charts um, the algos, whatever, I don't know. But this is like perfect. Look at the high each time, trend line. One, two, three, four. That one's a little bit lower. Look at this. They all connect on the body of the candle, not the high wick. So let's look at the monthly. In the monthly, you can clearly see the $1 has been holding since this IPO'd. Or actually, this thing's been since 2009. Wow. And then it, you know, it's had crashes and bounces. Where we are now, see, we're, we're broadening the wedge. See this? We're getting smaller to wider. It looks like this wants to make even more moves. It's kind of like cross back up. And what do you see here? Well, the three line, there's a lot of um, congestion here. Keep a lot of wicks too to the four line. Look at this four line. And then I'm you know, just trying to make this five line. Going back on the weekly. Look at this weekly. Wedge down. And then a reverse. It's like the reverse pattern. That's a wedge down. This is a broadening wedge up. It's not a rising wedge. See, a rising wedge would be if this is going like this and this is getting tighter like that on the reverse side. This is a broadening. You're getting bigger and bigger spikes. So I see three. Yeah, going up to 25. I would say, you know, from three, uh, you know, 325, 350, 75, four. Look at this four line. And then five, and then right here at that width would be like five sixty nine six. <clears throat> so in the future, this could go anywhere. I would say three, you know, we'll call it three twenty five to six. As you have the reverse here down, you know, we're going up. So still oversold on the weekly, so we just kind of have more and more spikes. And on this too, see it's back in this. Every time it spikes from this. It pulls back, it pulls back. This could pull back right here again. It could come all the way down to 125. That's your trend line in the bottom. Or it could come right back up again. Well, you know, a few weeks, months, you know, and come right through that again. Or the way the market's been, you don't know. This could come out Friday, do a little move here. Even during the day, and it really spike again. You just don't know with these. You know what the pattern's showing? 
like a lot of these now the lows look pretty good because you can see they keep spiking higher all them, but the market could change too. So, you know, these are extremely volatile, these penny stocks. You just, you don't know anything. If you really want to hold, like you wait for these stocks to get a low, like see here a low, really wash down. And even on this, like, oh, this thing come so far down. And this is because of the pattern. Look at the pattern, see this? Once you have that tight, you know the chances of it going back up are better. And then you see it, just look at each chart, how the pattern is. All right, so that's CNET. This is five stocks in the small cap penny land. We really went over their financials. So you can you know, take what you want from that and the chart patterns. So you know, we'll do another five after this. And we will see where these go because there's plenty of potential to make money. All right, so that's it for today. Please subscribe, like the channel, like payment trades on YouTube, like payment trades on StockWits. Like uh, what is it? Twitter, 007. It's one of their handles. Just trying to look here. Let's see here. I got, yeah, StockWits, like payment trades, Instagram. Mike Frank 98, TikTok, Mike Frank three, like the third, I, 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 Twitter, Mike 007. And that's it. Peace. Please subscribe and like the channel. Coming out with great stuff here. No one's going over these small caps, really. And you know, there's plenty of money to be made in them. Just got to know. And these are a lot of these are good trades. And if you're really smart, let's go back again. These are all patterns too. You're just they're just lower price. That's all. You know, as long as they don't go bankrupt, some of them can. You gotta be careful. But you just find patterns. Even if you want to do a small size, so every they form patterns. So over and over, you're gonna see patterns and breakouts. If you're gonna see it, trends, trends, and look at this. Oh, we're breaking through. Look at the volume. When you see a lot of volume come in, it's very important. And some of them have like one spike. Look at a spike. So that's how they run. All right, we're out for now. Peace.